What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Now, kick back, relax, and come take a ride with me. Y'all, it's happening. We're getting the rematch that all of us desperately wanted. South Carolina takes care of business. On the other side, LSU takes care of business. Business, South Carolina beating Tennessee, LSU beating Ole Miss to set up a rematch of the top two teams in the SEC, two of the top teams in the nation, battling it out for an SEC title. And both games, they were tested. South Carolina needed a buzzer beater from Camila Cardoso. There was drama in the LSU game. We're still waiting to hear exactly what's going on with last Terpoa, who started this game for the injured Michaela Williams. She ended up falling, hitting her head, nasty scene, and was carried off on a stretcher, guys. It was not a good scene. But before we get into all that, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest. Join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. Now, let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Now, we mentioned South Carolina started the day off. They needed a buzzer beater to knock off Tennessee, who came back from 23 points down. And South Carolina was so close to losing their first game of the season and being kicked out of this SEC tournament. The last player you expect to hit a three, Camila Cardoso, that's what Tennessee thought, and that's what Don Staley thought as well, so that's why she went to her. And, uh, (laughs) well, it paid off. And we heard from Camila Cardoso after that big shot what was going on through her mind. It's amazing. I feel like we worked really hard all season and our job is unfinished. And we didn't want to lose the game that we wanted to win. So I think I tried to do everything I could to win the game for my teammates. Do you know it was good when it came off your hand? No. And I didn't know it was good until like I seen the ball dropping on the floor. You can see my face, I was like, <laughs> What did it mean to have your family there to witness that moment as well? It's amazing. I mean, it's like the first time in the USA, the first time watching me play. Well, now the second. So they was really happy. I gave them a big hug and they was just so proud of me. Is that the best moment of your basketball career or your favorite? Yes, it is the best and my favorite. <laughs> I don't remember anything after that. about you having to get comfortable being the focal point of the opposing team scouting reports and, and being dominant in a game. How does a moment like that Kind of um, it definitely boosts my confidence a lot. Even um, I wasn't a good player today. I feel like I was off. Um, I didn't make a lot of baskets that I would normally make. So it boosts my confidence up, and I'm gonna come well prepared for tomorrow. We talk about so much about moving on from a win in this tournament setting. It's felt like a championship ending, but obviously there's one more to play tomorrow. How do you guys emotionally, mentally move on from this moment? So we just take one game at a time. After this is over, we're gonna flip the page, go out there, do some scout, and come tomorrow prepared. I assume with one more game, you'll line up a shooting guard tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> nah. I'll leave that for Paul. <laughs> and Tennessee did everything right to win this game except contesting that last shot, that bank three-pointer from Camilo Cardoso. And we heard their post game as well from their coach as well as Rakia Jackson and Jewel Spear, two players who absolutely balled out out we were just doing what we knew we could do playing hard and you know staying in the fight Um, i'm just proud of how we just continue to fight despite score despite anything we just continue to fight and i'm just so proud of this group yeah i thought we settled in pretty well um in the second half and we were down by a lot but we just kept talking about you know cutting the lead and uh kia did a really good job of finishing down the stretch as well Other questions for student athletes? Again, I know that's hard at the end there, but how do you bring this energy into the tournament, um, knowing that you almost cut a 23-point deficit deficit and cut their undefeated season? 
Just continuing to do the little things. Um, I felt like we really focused in on our defense. Um, we got the rebounds that we needed. We executed down the stretch. And, um, you know, just what we did in those three quarters, how we just continued to fight, it was just great to see. Yeah, I would say pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, we've been knowing that we've been playing pretty good basketball. And I think y'all got to see that today. Um, got to see our toughness. So, yeah. Pete. Jill, what happened in that first quarter and you know the start of the second quarter that where you guys got in that big hole? Were they doing something different that you hadn't seen, or how did you assess that? Um, I would say they got downhill pretty fast, pushing in transition. Uh, coach said we needed a matchup a little bit quicker, and I felt like we uh, fixed that in the second half, so they didn't get as many transition points. So we had to guard them in half court, which was better for us. Any other question for the student athletes? If not, we'll let student athletes. Oh, here you go. Rikia, the clutch gene that you have, is that something you feel like you've had your entire career, or is that something you've built at Tennessee? Um, I feel like Tennessee and my teammates, they just gave me confidence. Um, you know, they put the ball in my hands, and I see them when I see them. So I feel like it's just something that the chemistry over the years have come. Um, I feel like our chemistry is just getting better and better. We're peaking at the right time. So I feel like just the confidence that my coaches and my teammates give me just put me in those moments to want to make those plays. All right. If there are no more questions. I've got a tough group in that locker room. You know, and that's um, – can't say that's how I would have defined them earlier in the year, but they have really taken on that challenge. And um, that was on full display today, man. That was I'm so proud of them. Um, God, I just hate that for them. I wanted that so bad for our team. Hey, Kelly, can you just take us through the defensive strategy you all had on that final position? Yeah. Didn't call a timeout because they did They did not have one. And um, I wanted Tamari to be in the paint so we, they couldn't get a pass to the paint. But obviously, and we were trying to get Rakia back there in the play. Um, but obviously, at the end of a game like that, everyone is a shooter, you, you know, because you could luck one in in that moment. So we just didn't. Didn't get where we needed to, um, to to get that defended. Right in front. What do you take from this going into the rest of the season, both on the positive and the negative? Yeah, I think one we we've been playing good basketball. We've been we've been tough. I think the positive is just the fight that we have. We we know what we've got inside us. I think, you know, the um, the negative would be just our start offensively. Um, we, we were a little panicked, it looked like, uh, a little out of sorts. But, um, you know, we, we, we settled in um, after that first quarter. But, you know, you have such a, st such a stagnant first quarter, it puts you in the hole. And I'm being here tomorrow, so I've not looked at the schedule yet. So but we'll get them some time off this week and get ready to go. Now on the other side, LSU picked up the dub against Ole Miss, sealing the deal, heading into the SEC championship game. I think they got a chance to beat South Carolina and get that number one seed for the NCAA tournament. But looking at the Ole Miss game, LSU picked up the dub 75-67. to And you look at it right there, what we expect, you know, they win the rebounding battle 37 to 31 which was huge for them they win the assist battle and they get a really balanced scoring effort looking at it man angel reese 9 of 17 17 rebounds 21 points another double double anisa moro got in where she fits in 12 points 12 rebounds an impressive four assists and just a big game from both of these guys just really, really imposing their will on the glass and almost out-rebounding Ole Miss's team, just the two of them by themselves. Flage Johnson continues to be Miss March. She has been incredible the last few games for, for LSU, man. Has another big game today with 21 points, three assists, two rebounds, hit three of four from deep, man. Her last three-pointer kind of put the dagger in Ole Miss, to be honest with y'all. 
Um, just overall great game from them. Haley Van Lift had a tough shooting night, but she still finished with 12 points, two assists, one rebound. And I tell y'all what, man, if Last Terpoa is going to be missing time, they're definitely going to have to rely on Kent as well as Haley Van Lift a lot more. Poa finished with five points. She was in foul trouble for some, most of the game, to be honest. She had four assists, um, you know, just never really established a rhythm. And then late in the fourth, we mentioned that she took that terrible fall, hit her head, and it just was not a good scene. So we're waiting for an update to see if she'll actually be a part of this game. She's been starting the last couple of games while Michaela Williams, as a precaution, is getting some rest. And you assume you know she's been resting up for this matchup right here, the rematch against South Carolina. And we, we remember now, the last time these two matched up, LSU did everything they could to hold on to that lead up until late in the fourth quarter. Raven Johnson, Bree Hall, Camila Cardoso just really uh, got it going and put the dagger in the Tigers. But they, they, they had their foot on South Carolina's neck for three quarters plus, y'all. Um, these two teams match up really well. The thing is, though, the depth. Now, we've been seeing Kim Mulkey rod her starters like Tom Thibodeau with the Bulls back in the day. They've been playing a lot of heavy minutes, while South Carolina has been getting a lot of production from their lesser options that they typically don't depend on. But Tessa Johnson, for one, has been playing spectacular. The freshman being entrusted with some big minutes. She played late in this game. Um, today and just came up with some clutch points. She's aggressive hunting her shot, but on top of that, she had a really big assist to Camila Cardoso when they really needed it. She broke down the defense for Ole Miss, or excuse me, she broke down the defense for Tennessee, attacked the cup, drew in the double team, and kicked it out to Cardoso for a nice layup. So we're seeing her development, her really grow up in, between, in front of our eyes. Of course, Malaysia Full Wiley, Ashlyn Watkins have been playing really good basketball as well. So the depth, of course, you worry about. LSU really did a good job on the boards against South Carolina the first time. They also did a good job in making shots, controlling the tempo, and just getting everybody in rhythm. Since then, they've gotten a lot better, though. This LSU team is light years better than they were the last time South Carolina saw them um, in Baton Rouge. The chemistry has dramatically improved. Um, I think a lot of these players are in better shape right now. And they're hot. They're playing their best basketball of the season. Haley Van Lith has been controlling the tempo and really harnessing her point guard abilities, being that leader, being that poised, calming presence. Along with Last Terra Pole, we've seen these two guards really be successful playing with each other. So we know that they can throw a couple different looks out there. Poe has been incredible in the defensive end. She's shooting the ball well now, scoring the basketball. So you hope that she'll be able to participate in this game, man. But definitely wishing her a speedy recovery with whatever, you know, is going on head or neck injury. Just wishing her a speedy recovery. But um, looking at, you know, Anissa Morrow, she led them in scoring that last game against South Carolina. She's going to have to be big again. Um, and I think that they can take some things away from Tennessee, seeing how they attacked L or how they attacked South Carolina, how they took advantage of Camilo Cardoso in the pick and roll. LSU is definitely gonna have to uh, look at doing some of that. Who's gonna take the matchup with Flaje Johnson? How she's been playing? Is it gonna be Tahina Pow Pow? Is it gonna be Bree Hall? Is it gonna be breezy? I don't know, man. It's gonna be interesting to see if they go with the same matchups as last time. We're definitely gonna see a bunch of different looks though, because neither one of these teams played their best game or showed their full arsenal in that contest. So I mean, we know what it's gonna come down to: rebounding. It's going to come down to LSU's guards controlling the tempo and being able to make shots. It's going to be able, it's going to, ha who's going to have a quick start? South Carolina had a really quick start today. Is, you know, who's going to have the quick start? Are they going to, they both have been taking care of the basketball today. Who's going to be more careful? Who's going to value each possession? You know, who is Angel Reese fouled out of the last game? You know, who's going to dictate the foul trouble, the foul count? Um, I wouldn't bet on her fouling out again. And, you know, some people feel like maybe if she didn't foul out in that first game, 
it could have went a little differently. Now, that first game was a barn burner. It was a dog fight, and I'm expecting nothing less. But I think the team that controls the glass, has the least amount of turnovers, and makes their free throws is going to have a really, really strong chance to win this game. Um, we know South Carolina's strength is the depth as well as being able to shoot the three. And they've got a lot of depth in the front court, a lot of big bodies to contend with Moro as well as Del Rosario as well as Angel Reese and whoever we may see out there. Um, we know that. And then the starting five for LSU we know is their bread and butter, the strength of their team, a lot of star power just as much as anybody in the nation. Um, they have two of the hardest playing players in the country with Anissa Moro as well as Angel Reese. I mean, just high motor, get after it, straight dogs on the court. The competitiveness, Haley Van Lift is coming together and playing her best basketball, looking more comfortable running that point guard position for South Carol or for LSU, excuse me. Haley Van Lift looking a lot more comfortable running that point guard position for LSU. Um, just settling in, finding, knowing her teammates' games better. They're doing a really good job of getting the ball inside and letting Moro and, and Reese do their thing. And then Flage is playing incredible. Flage is just playing incredible. We're seeing her take that next step. It'll be a big boost for them to get Michaela Williams back as well. Um, who had a good game, too, in this first matchup. So, guard play. You know, if can Flage, HVL, and Michaela Williams outplay the guards of South Carolina? Can they contend with Tessa Johnson, Malaysia Full Wiley, Tahina Pow Pow, Raven Johnson? You know, it's going to be about guard play, the bigs. What are they going to do? Can Angel Reese win that matchup against Camila Cardoso again? We, we got to see, you know, who's going to control the glass, who's going to control the tempo. And, uh, you know, it's going to come down to execution in this game. Big players are going to have to make big plays. And it's going to be a thriller, man. I think LSU, they can win this game. They should lock up a one seed. South Carolina looking to just get another accolade. They, they remain undefeated. You wonder, you know, with such an emotional win, um, in that contest, beating Tennessee on the last shot, you wonder how they turn around and recover the next day. Um, it seems like, though, to be honest, South Carolina feels like a team of destiny, y'all. I mean, I think that three pretty much sealed the deal for me. I mean, the bank shot, Camila Cardoso, first career three in front of her family. Are you kidding me? Like, what in the world, man? What are the odds? Tennessee let, felt very comfortable letting her shoot that shot, and she just pushed it in. You know, it was crazy. Like, uh, the Tennessee coach said, hey, she lucked it in. I don't know, man. She may practice that shot from the top of the key, but she definitely let that thing fly. Shot it with confidence at that. Um, but this is going to be a mega matchup. Two Titans, a lot on the line, a lot more on the line in this contest than there was in the first contest during the regular season. Uh, both these teams are totally different. Both of them are playing a really great basketball. Um, I think South Carolina had to work a bit harder for their win. Will they be emotionally drained? I mean, that is a thing. You know, um, the depth, we know they have the edge there. But you can only play five players at a time. I'm just saying, you can only play five at a time. So this is going to be big, man. Kim Mulkey's still looking for that dub against South Carolina. South Carolina just continuing to dominate the SEC, looking for another SEC tournament title. Don Staley's probably going to be named Coach of the Year. I mean, we know that much. And you got Angel Reese, who's the SEC Player of the Year, ain't backing down from nobody. If she can stay out of foul trouble, we saw her have tremendous success against Cardoso in this LSU front line. I think, though, man, we've seen the development and the evolution of Sanaya Fagan, who I think could be a serious difference maker with her size and her, her, her athletic ability and her upside. I think she could be an X factor in this game. Um, just uh, it's, it's a lot of different looks that South Carolina can. They can go small their matchup and have Tessa Johnson guarding Anissa Morrow. They could go big, have Fagan out there, um, Chloe Kitts. Camila Cardoso, Ashlyn Watkins, a mix of them. Um, it's a lot of different looks, but I think Haley Van Lift has to play big. 
especially if Poe is not in this game. Haley Van Lith has to play the game of her career. Flaja Johnson has to keep doing exactly what she's doing. Michaela Williams has been out the last couple games. She's got to come in and shake off that rust. Um, seeing South Carolina your first game back after some games off, that's a tough bounce back. Um, and Anissa Morrow just needs to continue to do what she's doing as well, being that most consistent player, making shots. I think she'll be beneficial if she can get her perimeter game going, knock some shots down from three like she did in the first matchup with this team. Um, it's going to be big. You know, the big thing with South Carolina that I've continued to talk about are the turnovers and the free throw shooting. They left some points at the line today, and it almost cost them. But they had did a very, very much improved job controlling the pace and controlling the possessions and taking care of the basketball. So it'll be interesting to see, man. We know this is a battle of two titans. Y'all let me know y'all keys of the game. How do y'all feel about this matchup? Can South Carolina keep the magic going? Are they truly a team of destiny? Can LSU knock off the titans that are South Carolina, clinch that SEC title, Bring it back to the bayou and lock up that number one seed so they can play at home and host the region. Y'all let me know. Holler at your boy. Let me know how y'all feel about the situation. And make sure you hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest. That's a wrap for us. Until next time, hey, we out.